So while at Edisto Beach State Park, uh, we did a couple of different excursions out of the park. Um, the the big one is Botany Bay. And worth it, you know, it, it's an effort. You have to make sure you go when you can go. You have to check all the DNR rules. There's a lot of rules, there's a lot of restrictions, a lot of regulations, but it's just breathtaking. Yeah, and, and then the other thing, and we always try and find somewhere to go get a bite to eat. Uh, it was a little more challenging. Uh, if you watched the last video, uh, we recorded that just before we were leaving. Thought, oh, was, yeah, we'll find something. Yeah, going at 7 o'clock on Sunday night of Labor Day is yeah. probably a bad choice yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> on our part. Uh, we wound up at the Sea Cow Eatery. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this video of some of the, the things that we, the excursions that we made away from the park at Edisto. Botany Bay was kind of our big, you know, extra outing thing that we wanted to do, that we want to take the kids. We lived in South Carolina for years, have heard about it, have heard, you know, seen people's photographs. Yeah, se several people, when they heard that we were coming to Edison, they said, oh, you got to go to Botany Bay. Yeah, have you been? Are you going to Botany Bay? It's it's worth it. It's worth it. And and when you say it's worth it, you it really, you have to kind of make a plan to go to Botany Bay. You really need to check the DNR website, which is dnr.se.gov, to find out when you can go to Botany Bay. Because Botany Bay, obviously owned by the DNR, really is a hunting um, preserve. Preserve. It, it's a place for hunters. So we just got in the car and drove over there on Saturday, and it was straight up closed to all people that weren't attached to this dove hunt. Like, and, no going. And ironically, uh, Saturday afternoon after we realized that, I went into the store here uh, at the park and there's a calendar of what days there are hunts and what days it's open to the public. One hint, it's always open to the public on Sundays. There are no hunts on Sundays, so you can always plan on that. But uh, especially later into the fall, it is yeah, more summer, of a hunting preserve. Summertime is kind of more checking it out. Um, and it's not just beach. There's historic ruins. There's activity. It's it's so cool. There's so many neat things. Yep. The little, beach obviously is the big ticket. Yeah, a little, little bit of history of, of the area. It was two plantations. Um, they mostly were growing um, rice, cotton, indigo. Um, and so that's Bleak Hall and Sea Cloud were the two plantations back in the 1870s. So uh, they, once the plantation era was over, they just became family farms. Uh, they were family farms up until 2008, I believe it was, when they were handed over to the state. And the state, uh, as we mentioned, is using it now as a hunting preserve. Uh, but the, what most people go to Botany Bay for is the Boneyard Beach. The Boneyard Beach. And there was a lot of birders. There was other places where you could stop and walk. It was literally some places that looked like swamp and sketchy land. They were like, hikers welcome. And I was yeah. like, mm -mm. Yeah, no, that looks like a place alligators live. Like, I am not hiking through that. There's some fishing. There's yeah. a Jason's Lake. There's some very specific rules about fishing. I would, again, highly recommend Check going to the, the website, looking at the rules. Um, you, you have to be with somebody under 17 to fish and each young person only can have two adults I mean it's it's designed for teaching learning hunting fishing yeah, you know it's set up in that in that regard but the and the other but the boneyard is really why we went yeah. the main reason so it, the road in is it's beautiful it's but spectacular. if it but if it's rained at all it's muddy if you have uh, a little low to the you, ground you car, don't, you don't want to take a sports car there. Yeah, if, um, if you aren't towing something, if you're towing something, you're probably fine. If you're driving a motorhome and you have that little tiny tow car behind you, you might want to make sure it's been dry. Yes. Uh, so the road in is rough. Once you make the left turn into the the preserve itself, just keep going on the road. You're you're going to question yourself a couple times. There's going to be a there couple was times. Several times he was like, "Is this where we park?" I'm like, "I think you should keep going." 
And, and what I wish we would have paid attention to is when you check in, when you turn in, you got to register and get your little yellow tag and look for this this little map and, and, and it'll show and you. And it was on the back side of where I registered just so, yeah. you know. And there is actually the map that shows you how to get there. And just, I'm sure a lot of this is online too. If we had, you know, done some research and it was just like, we're going to Body Bay. So We haven't camped in eight weeks. We're off our game a little bit. Yeah. So just keep going down the road and then you're going to reach a point where there's going to be a T. It's going to say tour to the left, beach to the right. If you want to go to the beach, you go to the right. There's pretty good parking. Uh, yeah. A large number of parking. It's not delineated paved parking sites. It's yeah. just got to pull up. But, but and the guy did say, we like we had, we found parking pretty easily. The guy said, this is our biggest crowd since Memorial Day. So probably on an average Sunday, it's not crowded. And it wasn't even, I wouldn't say crowded. Yeah, but, but there was especially as we were people. leaving as we were leaving parking was getting a little bit a little more a little more scarce so once you park there's a half mile walk across the causeway uh, it they said it's handicap accessible I, I believe that yeah um, I mean it was little, it was flat bumps, there was but, um, it, it's pretty you're going through the marsh so you've got pretty views off to both sides yeah, and I mean, there's this beautiful marsh off to, and, and then you and come to a hammock island yep there's a little hammock island which is a, a island in between the the barrier island and the actual inland island uh, these little hammocks is what they call them. there's a little bit of information about that uh, there's a couple other down you know, boneyard trees along the way and, and then you go into the, the woods of the island and it seems like it like, wow this you could hear the beach but where is it where is it and then all of a sudden it kind of curved I think because yeah. it, it yeah. seemed like you there, gosh there's still a lot of woods and there's no beach but it kind and then, of and then all of a sudden you turn and you walk out into just, this beautiful it almost seems otherworldly because we're so used to and we tell the kids yeah. you know you're so used to this manicured beach like you go even myrtle beach state park huntington is like that too even edisto is not as kept as some of the other um beaches but but the beaches are clean but they're still like giant pieces of driftwood, <laughs> giant trees, giant shells. I mean, prehistoric type look to it. And that's what it seems like. It's kind of like going back in time. Almost, yeah, it's, it, it's very if you've ever surreal. Been, if you've ever been to the Boneyard Beach at Hunting Island, it's very similar. Uh, there's just not many of these left anymore. But the reality is this is probably what most of our beaches would look like if they were left Yeah, normally. Uh, and this is what I... And we, one of the things we tell, we talk to you about the kids is like when people settled America, when they like showed up, this is what they arrived to. They didn't arrive to this nice little boardwalk to the beach. They didn't arrive to even like lots of just plain sandy beach. They arrived to big fallen trees that now were basically uh, petrified. They've been in the water so long. They. You know, these weren't trees they could use for anything. I mean, not even shelter. I wouldn't think yeah, you could. I mean, these trees not. are uh, salt soaked. Um, and the it, kids were climbing yeah, on them. They're, they're they're neat. They climb, climb on these trees. There's all kinds of uh, little critters and oh, snails and um, bugs. Snails and barnacles and these, I don't know, Sam and you call them two headed monsters. They, I don't know what they were. We have to look that up. They yeah. had antennas on both ends and it seemed like they went both directions. Yeah, it's, um, it was really, it's, it was neat. Uh, there were several people there that looked like they were set up for the day. Um, to me, to it's, me, it's not a. I'm gonna spend the day on the beach, beach because, like, I mean, you're, you're not boogie boarding out there. You're not, you know, building the sand castle so much. Um, yeah. We were there at kind of mid tide, I would say, probably high tide. It's, it's way high. high. Um, it, it looked like it. It looked like high tide. It's gonna be all the but way. But you're gonna up have to hardly this. any beach. Yeah. Um, low tide, I would say, you probably had. If it's anything like hunting, you had like crazy amount of beach i mean just you had you had mile a mile before you got yeah. to like actual water at low low um I, I can't imagine it'd be a place you take like your umbrella and your beach blanket if you had especially if you were camping like we're and i talked to a lady as we were leaving because she was like we're going you know they were putting their beach buggy and their stuff and they were going to have a place to hang out um you know we had access to hunting i mean to edisto here we had access to the beach if you don't have access to the beach and it did look like if you walked a good, I mean, a mile down the beach, it was yeah. it was less boneyardy, more open. Um, but it, that was going to take a little bit of a hike, especially with little littles. The other thing, is, 
we talked about it at Edisto, uh, the sea turtles there. They said they had over 500 sea turtle nests this season, Botany Bay. Which um, blows my mind, but when you think about it, there's no lights, there's no after hours activities, there's nobody on the beach after dark. And it's two miles, they have two miles of, of beach at nothing. Botany Bay. No stuff. So here at Edisto State Park, they're right at one and a half miles. Botany Bay, which is just right up, there's a, a river or a little creek in between them, and then it's Botany Bay. Uh, that's another two miles, so it's a, it's a lot of beach, and that's almost a thousand uh, nests. nests. And this there were year. people, there were volunteers. The, the other thing that I thought was really cool, when you walked up, there were volunteers. There was a map. There were volunteers there. There were some artifacts. They had a whalebone vertebrae yeah. that looked like a giant chunk of rock. It was just amazing. They had um, a whelk and um, an egg sac from a whelk. They had a petrified turtle. Um, and the um, horseshoe crab. And then horseshoe crab yeah. shell. And so the kids could touch it and feel it and look at it and, be, and ask questions. The guys there were very knowledgeable. They were very helpful. They had, and then they had a big turtle contingency. And then there was like DNR people who were coming and going um, that had gotten a call. That there was some turtle activity. The um, it was it was just a really neat experience. Yep. One thing, heads up, and this is what and, it, and there's signs everywhere, so you won't miss it when you go. But there is no shelling allowed at all. You cannot pick do not, up. Do you not can, remove anything. You cannot remove a shell, a tiny shell, a big shell, a stick, a bug, a, anything. No, um, yeah, just don't do it. <laughs> it's a four hundred and seventy dollar fine. Um, but because of that, there's awesome shells. Oh, the shells are everywhere, and they're big, large clam shells, and uh, there weren't Giant, as many. Well, there weren't as many. There weren't as many whelks as, as I yeah. expected. Um, but there were there were some. There weren't as many as I expected. I mean, they're not searching your bags, but don't do it. Leave it yeah. for somebody else. Let somebody else have the opportunity to see the amazing beach. That's another part I think that makes it seem so rustic and prehistoric is the just ginormous. I mean, as big as your hand. Um, clam shells and things but the but I would say because my kids pick up shells pick up rocks pick up everything everywhere we go I searched everybody's bags <laughs> before we went in and I was like I don't want to come out with some shell we picked up and some random rock we picked up in a parking lot somewhere and be in trouble um, so if you have kids like ours that are always picking up rocks and shells and leaves and things you know make sure you're not carrying anything in either um, and some of it you know it's preservation some of it is like I mean Timothy was dying to catch one of those little bugs so we could get a better look at it and, and I said, we don't know what that bug feet eats if it's, you know, it would mess up the marsh somewhere else. And, you know, yeah. some of it's just, it's just like not carrying firewood. Yeah. Then um, on your way out, uh, if you picked up the, the map and the little brochure, they have a driving tour. Yeah, do that before. Yeah, pick, you know. yeah, pick up the little brochure. We managed to pick one up after and um, didn't make quite as much sense. So there, there are uh, 15 little markers uh, just numbered markers as you drive through and you can read along and learn about the history yeah. of the plantation yeah, cool. and the There's property. a lot of information and, and and they talk about the different owners and the different buildings and the, the ruins and what's there. And even trees and, and um, a well that was dug. It was a well that was dug in 1825. Like, yeah. It's still just sitting right there. It's just, yeah. Uh, it, it's a neat piece of history and uh, I'm glad that, that the family decided to preserve it by handing it over to the state. And allow, I was thinking about it. You know, just on the other side of it is Seabrook Island. So you got the development of Edisto, and it is a amazing piece of history that is saved and being preserved. So you can see what this land originally like was. And, instead and, of just and more how, development and modern. Yeah, the, the family, the family could have just made a fortune off of developing that property, but instead they decided to preserve it, and I'm very thankful for that. So. Um, really neat piece of history if you're at Edisto it's worth driving over spending half a day and, and checking it out and then we always like to try and find somewhere to eat um, and we tried a couple places <laughs> yeah we, we didn't plan this out very well um, the first place that I really wanted to go was Whaley's Whaley's has been here since the 40s uh, their sign said the home of the ugly fish we, yeah. we didn't get much information it was um, it's, it's kind of in the middle of the neighborhood. Uh, we mentioned in the other video, there's not a lot of development here at Edisto. Uh, they've kept development in the business district relatively small. Uh, so Whaley's is, is, is kind of an institution 
and it was very popular on the day before Labor Day. Uh, we we got there and it was a two hour wait. Two hours. I mean, at that point, you should just tell people no. So <laughs> like yeah, you're not we, getting to eat here today. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, it might not have taken that long, but with at seven o'clock with a seven and nine year old who were yeah. actually hungry, I was like. Yeah, that's that's just not gonna work. So no we tried a couple other places the, because it was Sunday. A number of them were closed. Uh, so as we were kind of making our way back to the park, uh, we happened to see um, Sea Cow see, see Cow Eatery, and it didn't look like a long line. So we parked and walked up. And the reason it didn't look like a long line is because the line is on the back side of the building. <laughs> Um, so it was about 45 she said 45 minutes to an hour kind of lean toward an hour I think I told them 45 minutes just to um, you know grease the wheels and it wound up taking us less than 30 minutes yeah um, and it, it wasn't really that bad way sea uh, cow is a it's small it's a really small little place uh, I think you said it's seated 62 the, 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 the or fire marshal says 62 inside the building uh, can't imagine 62 and there would be packed um, I would imagine probably the whole place doesn't seat a hundred folks. Um, so, but it was so it, good. it was really good. And um, the staff was fun and friendly. Yes. And they they advertise on their menu and and in the the flyer for the park here that they get as much as they can local. So the seafood is local, uh, as much of their vegetables as local as they can. Uh, and it, it was and good. like the sides last night were like collards. And, I right. mean, it was. It wasn't what you would expect. It, it was very good. It was. So I, I just got the uh, shrimp and scallops. and I got a shrimp po' boy. Because I'm partial shrimp po' boy. It's kind of a connoisseur wherever I am to see how you if you did it good. Yeah. I will say their tartar sauce and, and even, co even cocktail felt homemade to me. Um, which is always a plus in my book. When you can make your own sauces, it's, you yeah. can tell you're good people. Yeah, and considering the, the world we're in today, I thought it was priced uh, about what I would have expected. You know, it's, at first, I, it seemed a little high, but then I reminded myself everything's high right now, uh, especially food. So uh, it was fair. It's usually in the beach in yeah. season. So my, my biggest advice for um, eating out here at Edisto is plan ahead. Maybe go earlier and, in the yeah, day. Go, go earlier. Go and, closer to five. Be willing, be willing to wait. Uh, there's there's not a lot of restaurants on the island, uh, they, and that's on purpose. You know, they really try and limit things as best they can. Uh, next time we come down, we'll try, we'll, we'll have a better plan. So, uh, all in all, Edisto is it's a great, uh, it's a great little spot in South Carolina. And last time we were here too, I want to put a quick plug in. They have a great environmental center oh, yeah. for the kids, for anybody really. There's. Um, um, there's, there's live animals, there's a touch tank, there's, there's, there's alligator skeletons. There's alligator skeletons. There's this whole shrimp boat like beginning where kids can be on the radio and like be on a shrimp boat and like throw the things and, and um we messed up. It's open Tuesday through Saturday, nine to four. Um I kind of assumed it'd be open today. It was not. Um Clara is a, a nature center connoisseur, so she was devastated. So we had to promise that we would try our best to come back to Edisto. We might have to make like a day trip or something and, and hang out a little bit. Um, it, but it's a great, if you're here Tuesday through Sunday, <laughs> Tuesday through Saturday, please try to take advantage of that. It, it, it's a great, it's a great opportunity to walk through. It's a, it's very cool. It's dark and some of the places it's, um, there's some little videos to watch there. Like I said, there's touch tank, there's all kinds of things, activities, and they have a lot of programming to Tuesday yeah. through Saturday. Yeah. And you know, m most people during the summer that come to Edisto often stay for a whole week. Um, as a matter of fact, they, they kind of require a seven day booking. The Memorial uh, Day to Labor Day, yeah. yeah. But um, So most people are going to have a day or two well worth getting off the beach and going and checking out the environmental center. Plus you got a rainy afternoon. Yeah. Uh, it's, all in all, uh, love Edisto. Uh, the, just yeah, it's still the, very the high dri marks. The drive in is beautiful. Um, the, the island itself is beautiful. Uh, it's a, it's a great little place. Yeah, worth it. And uh, I highly suggest checking it out. Once again, thank you, Brett Bishop. If you've watched this, thank you so much for this site. If you uh, watched part one. Yes, uh, we really we really do appreciate, appreciate your site. We had a good time. Thanks for watching.